thing started when we read in the newspaper that there was this $17 million Harbour Foreshore plan devised uh, to coincide with the bicentennial year. We just wondered from the drawings what it would look like in you know, real life and how that would could upset a whole neighbourhood or improve it, but something would definitely um, you know, drastically change within that time span of three years or whatever. So I just thought it would be interesting to document um, the people who lived here and some of the people who, you know, had well grown up here or artists who lived here now. It's like um, taking something for a little while and looking at it closely and then you put it aside. It's just to examine change. A place undergoing change will inspire many thoughts from reminiscences which are sometimes pleasant, sometimes sad, to conjecture about the future, perhaps with relief at the vision of a new prosperity or anger at the possibility of losing a valued part of our heritage. The first step was to hold a public meeting to gauge the level of support for such a project within the East End community. So we held a public meeting at TPI House in Scott Street in April 1984, where we invited residents to participate by supplying memorabilia and oral histories, and then perhaps learning to make their own prints. Rob Winston, a past president of the Newcastle Printmakers Workshop and acting town planner at this time, outlined the history of planning and development in the area and acknowledged the heritage value of the East End. Night classes, discussions, critiques and weekend workshops were all part of the process of exploring the potential of this visual arts project. The Awabakal Aboriginal Cooperative formed a silkscreen collective and made their first prints in a 12-week course at the printmaker's workshop. They focused their attention on the Aboriginal legend of the giant black kangaroo who lived on Nobby's Island long before the white man constructed the breakwater joining Nobby's to the mainland. The strongest sense of excitement about this project came in talking to the residents and individuals who have had a long-term interest and concern with Newcastle's East End. And how long have you lived in this area? And has your family, like your mother, or did they live here before you, or were you new uh, to the no, area? No, um, I was new to the area 20 years ago. 20 years ago? Yes, when I have been. Were you obviously like living in the area? Oh, I just love it. Yes. Yeah. Tell me why you love it. Um, love everything about it, the people, the atmosphere and of course the pool and the beaches. There's also a housing commission development planned here. Um, how do you feel about um, well, what you lose from that redevelopment in terms of yes, well we'll be losing a lot in as much as our view privacy, our nor'easter that we get. And we're awfully sad that with the Harbour Shore beautification that's going on down in front of us, that in the end we won't be able to see it from this point. Mm -hmm. It will be blocked out by the six-storey buildings going up 
directly in front. So we're going to be left without all views around, which is unfortunate and sad for mm. us. The whole area seems to be changing now. Yeah. It has changed. Um, Newcastle East was always a little intact um, residential island almost and it had been fairly self-sufficient I think over the years and it has to do I think with the proximity of one neighbour to another and, and things like that but of course the character of Newcastle East has changed because a lot of older residents aren't here any longer and so new people have moved in and those new people plug into other sorts of support systems other than just you know the neighbourhood support system. I think it has retained a lot of that um, identity that made it special. Uh, but, you know, maybe the actual neighbourliness and uh, mutual support thing has lessened to a degree. Well, Newcastle's one of those places where, it, with its convict uh, origins, I don't think that uh, a great deal of thought was given to the natural beauty of the place. It was really it, probably one of the most beautiful places, naturally. You know, the fact that they were cutting knobbies down gives you an idea of how they thought about the environment. And when you see these photographs, or these old paintings and things like that and drawings, mm -hmm. you just realise just how distinctive mm -hmm. the landscape was. And I've not done the research, but someone should be doing the research to bring all this together. Mm. This is not only the place where la Shortland landed, this is the, the place where coal was first discovered. It's the place where, where there's the only British fortress, you know, enclosed fortress in, on the coast of uh, Australia, mm. uh, at Port Scratchley. The breakwater, which is uh, the most important, significant development of the port of Newcastle because it's, uh, it's, it's the first stage in developing the port of Newcastle. You know, th there mm. must be a lot of uh, other information that if a researcher uh, was working on it, they would find. Mm. Newcastle East, the site of the convict stockade and jail, isolated from the rest of the township by Sandhills, was considered a no-man's land. <laughs>